Today I will talk about one of the two research axes in our lab in Strasbourg, which I find fits well, this, uh, the research of this institute, because we have P53 uh, on one side, so the research of uh, uh, Janino's group, and HPV on the other side, so the, uh, the group of uh, Lawrence Planck. So, so in the first uh, in the first part, I will summarize, I will show you uh, the path uh, that took us to uh, the solution of structures of E6 uh, um, and P53. So underline the mechanism of HPV E6 mediated degradation of P53. And whereas in the second part, I will talk about, uh, I will show you the results of a uh, more a new uh, novel complex that we have identified using an HPV uh, model system. And this complex really acts at the interface uh, of the P53 and retinoblastoma pathways. So I have made few slides of a general introduction because I was told that uh, many PhD students, so I'm, I apologize if it seems a bit too uh, general for uh, more st senior students. Uh, so we know now for about two decades uh, that uh, genetic variations in cancer and uh, oncogenic viruses target the same cellular networks. Oh, sorry, I, I don't, oh, this is the, the same cellular networks. And this is the reason also why research on oncogenic viruses has been so instrumental and has provided so much information on uh, uh, the regulation of uh, key cellular methods. So the best example uh, with, in this respect is uh, uh, the regulation of uh, the tumor suppressor P53. So this is an overview on the P53 family of proteins, which consists of three homologous transcription factors, P53 itself, P63, and P73. So these transcription factors sh uh, share the same uh, a similar domain architecture with a very conserved DNA binding domain, also called the uh, core domain. And uh, they form tetramers, all of them, for, uh, via this oligomerization domain. And the main differences li lie in the C-terminal region, which is, uh, this is the re regulatory region of these transcription factors. And it is more extended in the P63 and P73 protein. So it includes an additional small module known as the SAM domain, which seems to be involved in protein-protein interactions. So as you know, uh, P the TP53 gene is mutated in about 50% of human cancers. So most of the, in most cases, the mutations reside in the core domain. And uh, uh, some of these uh, mutations impair the fold of the P53 core domain, which is per se already quite fragile. It has a low thermal stability. Uh, other mutations instead act uh, at the level of uh, uh, DNA binding interface. And so impair DNA binding of P53 uh, binding to, P, uh, to DNA. It is also now uh, well accepted. It's, uh, um, well known that uh, some of these hotspot oncogenic mutations of P53 in the core domain induce uh, novel protein-protein uh, interactions which uh, lead to the acquisition of uh, gain-of-function properties. So we, you will see later in the, in the presentation that it is not so surprising because this interface uh, binding to the DNA is actually also an interface for protein-protein interactions. So the core domain is not only a, a DNA binding uh, domain, but it's also a protein-protein interaction uh, domain. So the TP63 and 73 genes encoding P for P63 and P73 proteins, they are rarely mutated in cancer, but they can, they are can be expressed as oncogenic uh, isoforms, the delta NP73 and delta NP63 isoform. And this is due to the transcription from an internal promoter, the P2 promoter, which is present in both genes. The, both genes have a very similar structure. And so the transcription from the P2 promoter gives rise to this delta N uh, 
isoforms, which are truncated versions of the full-length proteins that we call TA, uh, TA P53, P63, P73. So, and for this region, they lack, uh, since they lack the transactivation domain here, they act as an inhibitors of P53 and P73 uh, transcription, or P53 signaling. So, the retinoblastoma RB family of proteins, also known as pocket proteins, is uh, composed of three uh, members, RB itself, P107, and P130. So these proteins function as, uh, as repressor, co-repressors of transcription of uh, cell cycle genes. And they do this by binding to and inhibiting the activity of E2F transcription factors. So the, 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 the binding to E2F is regulated by phosphorylation, so by cyclin dependent kinases. So in other words, uh, RB proteins do not interact, cannot interact in the hyperphosphorylated state. They can only bind to E2F if they are hyperphosphorylated or non phosphorylated. So in that case, if uh, when bound to E2F, they, the RB E2F complexes inhibit transcription. So whereas RB uh, binds preferentially to the canonical activators, the E2F 1, 3, uh, 1, 2, and 3 transcription factors, P107 and P130, they rather interact with the uh, classically known, they are not uh, repressors, so E2F 4 and 5. So we actually know now that these are not these two transcription functions that also have some activator properties, but this is, let's say, the classical view. So the activity of uh, RB proteins is tightly regulated with the cy cell cycle because it depends on the cyclins, uh, cycling expression through the CDK uh, kinases. And for example, the um, inhibitory complex E2F45 uh, with P113 and P107, they are important for the maintenance of the G0 uh, phase of QSs. Whereas uh, the activation of cyclins uh, enables the progression through the S phase, so the progression through the G1 checkpoint. Um, and it's, it can be regulated, so the activity of uh, CDKs can, is additionally regulated, not only by cyclins, but, but also by the CDKN family genes. So you have uh, P16, P15, P18, P19, which are the INFO family of uh, inhibitors. They bind and inhibit the activity of CDK4 and 6 complexes, whereas uh, P21 and P27, they target, and they mostly target CDK2 uh, complexes. So the two pathways are uh, extremely interconnected. Um, the best, uh, this is best seen through the expression of P21, which is uh, under the control of P53 and it's uh, triggered upon uh, stress. P21 then inhibits uh, CDK complexes, leading to the assembly of RB E2F complexes and also of the DREAM complex, which has at its core the E2F45, uh, P130, P107 um, complex dimer, uh, trimer actually. And this leads to cell cycle arrest. So now we come to HPVs. So human papillomaviruses are a big family of DNA uh, viruses, which have dif display different tropism, and they are divided into uh, different genera. So the high-risk mucosal HPVs from the alpha genus here, so some of the strains, so, which are known as high-risk mucosal, are implicated in about 5% of human cancers, in particular, to anogenital cancer, uh, cervical cancer is the most, uh, the, the best known of this type of cancers, and uh, also to one part, about at the moment, 20% of head and neck cancer. So these viruses have developed strategies to target both uh, uh, the P53 and uh, the retinoblastoma, the RB pathways, 
through its main, uh, their main oncoproteins, the E7 uh, oncoprotein and the E6 oncoprotein. So uh, the higher risk uh, uh, mucosal HPVs, the E7 protein from these viruses binds to RB proteins and this uh, promotes E2F transcription by uh, impeding uh, the, as the formation of E2F RB complexes. Uh, in, in, it is also known that uh, one part of these complexes associates with the cooling to ubiquitin ligase, and this leads to degradation of RB. In the case of the P53, the E6 oncoprotein forms a complex with uh, P53 and the cellular ubiquitin ligase is 6 at and this leads to degradation of P53. So <clears throat> my research has a uh, focus uh, in particular so on understanding the mechanism of E6 mediated of E6 uh, uh, oncogenic genic processes and in particular uh, degradation of P53. So in this process, we have EC, the E6 oncoprotein, which first recruits the ubiquitin ligase E6AP. This, in turn, leads to formation of a ternary complex with P53, which becomes polyubiquitinated and degraded by the 26S protein. So E6 is a small protein, which is able to interact uh, with, which has a, a large interactome, so many host pathogen, mediates many host, pa um, host pathogen interactions, and it does so mainly through linear motif domain interaction. So E6, uh, um, it consists of two uh, zinc figure uh, domains, which the two uh, domains now we know, they, target a very abundant motif, a cellular, abundant cellular motif, the LXLL motif, uh, which is present in several of the E6 targets, including the E6AP ubiquitin ligase. It also uh, contains and encompasses mo motifs like the PDZ binding motif in the C-terminal. This is a property which is um, exclusive of the higher risk uh, uh, mucosal HPVs, E6 proteins, and uh, the lab of Lawrence Banks has extensively studied the interactions mediated by this motif, which are uh, especially involved in um, cell junctions. Uh, so it has been, it took a while to obtain structural uh, data on this E6 uh, oncoprotein because often these uh, viral proteins um, which contain zinc uh, binding domains, they are not very soluble. Eh? So E6 uh, has displayed uh, the full length protein, um, high propensity to form aggregates. And at the beginning during my postdoc, I was working on uh, uh, the structural uh, resolution of the individual zinc binding domains using NMR spectroscopy. And one day, because I made a mistake in the concentration of my NMR samples, I observed, I made in fact a key observation, which in fact uh, de-blocked the project. So I realized I was comparing spectra. I, I didn't know I made a mistake in the concentrations. And I saw that some of the peaks, which this, this cross peaks correspond to the amide backbone uh, resonance. So you have the proton and the nitrogen uh, frequencies on the X and Y axis, they were just some of them, they were moving, so they were not exactly at the same place. And this is a, a sign that uh, these residues, these MI uh, protons are at the, at the interface with something. Uh, in this case, I only had uh, the E6 and domain, so it was a self-association interface. So, and this, Suggest, told me, I said, I have to mutate this surface because it's quite hydrophobic. It was a transient dimer, which I didn't realize when I was producing the samples. And uh, so mutation, to cut the long story short, uh, mutation of this interface enabled us to obtain full uh, soluble um, samples of the full length E6 
oncoprotein from the HPV-16 virus, which is the most uh, um, abundant oncogenic virus from the alpha, alpha group. So then this, uh, we have to add a few more tricks, like protein purification and complex constitution uh, tricks. And we were able to obtain for the first time the structure of uh, the HPV-16 uh, oncoprotein bound to a peptide uh, using X-ray crystallography, bound to a peptide containing the LXLL motif of his 6 p So the peptide was also fused to a uh, solubility tag, the maltose binding protein that also enhances crystallization. So, and almost at the same time with a similar approach, we were able to obtain the complex of uh, an in 6 protein issued from a phylogenetically distant virus, uh, a virus uh, infecting horses, which is quite uh, studied in the community, and bound to an excellent motif from the paxillin protein. So these structures uh, show that the peptide binds in a pocket uh, which is at the, formed by all modules, basically, of the protein, the two domains and the linker. This pocket is very conserved. Actually, it's a hallmark feature of E6 proteins from uh, viruses, papilloma viruses, and binding uh, um, issued from mammals, um, infecting, sorry, mammals. It's very well conserved. We could also identify one key residue, which is has a crucial role in structuring the architecture of the co uh, complex. It's this arginine, which we call the keystone arginine, because it makes contacts between the two domains and uh, to the peptide. So the, the whole architecture is maintained by this, this three module and the linker. Later on, <clears throat> we followed with the same uh, similar strategies. We managed to crystallize a complex of HPV-16 E6 and uh, the peptide from the ubiquitin ligase E6 AP and the core domain of P53. And what we observed is that the core domain of P53 interacts uh, with a cleft on the E6 protein, which is uh, in fact held together structure by the interaction with uh, the motif, the A6AP motif, the XLM motif. So we did um, find a detailed characterization of the interface. The peptide is important for structuring the, the P53 binding cleft on E6, but does not per se provide any contact to direct intermolecular contact to P53. And, uh, and interestingly, when we compare our so here you have in the ribbon representation is the E6 protein, and in the surface representation you have P53. When we compare our complex with other known complexes of the P53 uh, core domain, which is in the surface cloud representation here, with other known uh, protein binding partners, we see that all these known binding partners target. The, P, the DNA binding interface uh, of P53 core domain. So here, the core domain is all in the same orientation. Whereas E6, in fact, targets a surface which is at the back with respect, it's on the other side of the core domain with respect to the DNA binding. So our model, the model that we propose is that we have an interaction with an LXLL motif, which shapes, which functions as a conformational switch that shapes the binding uh, pocket, the binding cleft to, uh, for P53. And in addition, E6 is able to target an interface that it's free, that can be free also in the context of P53 bound to DNA or bound to other protein complex, uh, to other protein binding, protein binding part. So this was, uh, work was done, uh, as Giannino said in the introduction in the lab, uh, when I was working with Gilles Travé in Strasbourg. And um, I have to thank these people from IGBMC, 
uh, it's like our, uh, it's, uh, our neighbors, our rich neighbors who have uh, helped me with the crystallography. They have told me, taught me how to solve crystal structures and to crystallize complexes. So now I will come to the second part of the talk. Uh, so this project has been a tight collaboration with Massimo Tomazino at the IRWHO in Lyon. So here, we are dealing with, not anymore with the alpha uh, iris mucosa papilloma viruses, but with viruses from the beta genus, which are associated with non-melanoma skin cancer. So uh, Massimo devoted the last 20 years of his research, um, so one of the main research uh, uh, activities was uh, uh, focused on the beta 2 group of, uh, um, of this family, of this uh, genus, and in particular the association with non melanoma skin cancer. And uh, so these viruses also are also available to, he, he studied particularly the HPV 38 virus extensively. So this virus also is also able through the E6 and E7 oncoprotein to deregulate both P53 and RB uh, pathway signaling. But it does this with different mechanisms, mechanisms that are completely different from uh, as compared to the alpha uh, viruses. So for example, the E6 protein from the HPV38 interacts with P53, but this does not, it's in a through it's through an E6AP independent mechanism, and this leads to actually the upregulation of P53 levels. The E7 oncoprotein also interacts with RB proteins, and but whereas the alpha viruses target the hypophosphorylated form of RB and leading to uh, its degradation, the, the virus from the beta 2, uh, the, the E7 from the beta 2 viruses, uh, rather target the hyper, seem to target the hyperphosphorylated form, and this leads to a stabilization of RB levels. So, um, in, in addition, in human foskin keratinocytes, which are immortalized by the E6 and E7 oncoproteins of HPV38, which is our model system that we will call 38HK from now on, P53 induces the transcription of the delta MP73 isoform from the P P2 promoter of the TP73 gene. And this so this isoform, as I mentioned in intro introduction, acts as a dominant negative inhibitor of P53 uh, P73 transcription, and it has anti-apoptotic and pro-survival uh, functions. It's upregulated uh, in several, it's actually mostly known for being upregulated in non-viral human cancers, which display a particular resistance to chemotherapy. So, at the time with Massimo, we wanted to know a bit more about um, the mechanisms uh, used by these isoforms that I am, in particular, that I am 73 alpha, which is, seems to be correlated with the uh, development of um, several cancers, or to be upregulated in several cancers. It's one of the most prominent on uh, isoforms of this family, because you have also variations in the C-terminal region of the gene due to alternative splicing. So we wanted to know more if they if they do cooperate with other proteins, other transcription factors. And we performed affinity purification mass spectrometry experiments using the classical TAC approach, using the 38HK uh, cellular um, model system. So we, we in this way, we were able to identify, so we purify the nuclear fractions from uh, cell lines stably transected with uh, TAP, uh, that time 73 alpha TAP uh, fusions. And we could identify several binding parts of that time 73. And among these, we found 
the E2F4 P130 uh, complex with the cognate uh, heterodimer partner of E2F4, the DP1 protein. So just to remind you, this complex is participates in the receptor, um, sorry, um, functions as a, as a repressor of cell cycle genes in the G0 phase. And so we did a lot of protein-protein interaction analysis. So we started to validate this, uh, the, the, this, this finding. So we started with uh, interaction analysis on uh, uh, endogenous proteins. So we used the cell line stably expressing uh, that MP73 alpha fused to MHA tag. And we performed, we in this experiment, we isolated the nuclei from the keratinocytes and performed sucrose gradient uh, fractionation. We then did co-immunoprecipitation and we find the, that uh, the HA uh, delta MP73 fusions co-precipitates the three partners of the complex, so it were for the P1 and P130. I then, we then went on to uh, well, dissect the network of interactions between this complex, and we used uh, several complementary protein-protein interaction approaches. In the lab, we, we like very much this GPCA approach. It's an in-cellular protein-protein interaction uh, method, um, which is based on the reconstitution of a split uh, luciferase from the um, individual fragments GLUC1 and GLUC2 upon binding of uh, two partners. So this is uh, this experiment is it's quite uh, so this approach is quite practical because it can be done in 96 well plates so we can do a lot of parallel analysis and under certain conditions it can give also some semi quantitative in, uh, interaction uh, inf information so in this way we were so we screened that this is just showing a, a fraction of our uh, experiments so we were able to identify a direct interaction between that time 73 alpha and the e 2 f subunit of the complex so we then dissected this interaction and uh, so what we observe is that uh, in uh, uh, the e 2 f 4 shows higher binding responses as uh, compared to uh, the full length when compared to the full length TAP73 alpha protein and also higher responses as compared to the uh, homologous delta P63 uh, isoform. So the interaction is specific, is favored by the truncation of the TAD domain typical of delta N uh, isoforms and is specific for delta N P73. Then we uh, we truncated uh, delta N P73 from the C-terminal side and we, we could show that the C-terminal region is dispensable for, dispensable for the interaction here. Yeah. So basically suggesting that the interaction is uh, independent of the C-terminal splice status of the isoform, but it's lost, but more or less lost when we delete the oligomerization domain. And I think it's, this is because we lose all the avidity contributions that are brought about by the and by the tetramer, by the tetrameric format. And then, so when we then, we did some dil dilutions to uh, deletions uh, of the N-terminal region uh, preceding the core DNA binding domains, and what we found that there is an involvement of the proline rich region of the MP73 in the interaction. Okay, so all this data, <clears throat> suggests us a model in which uh, there is a binding site for E2F4 in the N-terminal region, delta NP73, that is not accessible in the case of uh, uh, the full-length uh, TAP73 alpha protein. So in this, in this respect, these isoforms also can, are able to establish uh, novel interactions with, uh, when compared to the full length uh, proteins. So, uh, so we then analyze the contributions of this complex, which we have identified. 
in uh, gene expression. So, and to do this, we performed uh, gene expression analysis in 38 HK in conditions of E2F45 or delta MP73 alpha knockdown. So, E2F45 knockdown done by SI RNAs, delta MP73 alpha knockdown done by antisense nucleotides targeting a specific peptide, which is unique. Um, in, for the delta N uh, isoform. And in this way, we were able to observe that some genes are upregulated. Uh, so the expression of some genes is upregulated in, uh, these are the genes underlined here, in conditions of either one or the other, of knockdown of either one or the other partner. So these genes uh, are putative targets of the complex, so we call them co-regulated genes. And when we compare, uh, so the expression of these genes in primary keratinocytes uh, that do not express that time to 73 alpha, because this isoform is expressed mainly in the transform, uh, so the um, the cells transformed by, by the HPV38 virus or the 6 and 7 oncoproteins, we have, whereas the E2F4 and P130 protein, proteins are more or less maintain the same levels, we see that many of these genes, most of these genes, either they are unaffected by the depletion of E2F4-5, or they anyway show lower levels of enhancement. So, in fact, what this suggests is that uh, the interaction with delta MP73 alpha rewires E2F4 to specific genes. And we have validated uh, this co-regulation by E2F4-5 and delta N uh, of some of, for some of these genes also in cancer cells expressing delta MP73. So we then perform chip analysis on some of these genes. Here I show the, the experiments, the results obtained with the uh, math P gene, where you can see that, uh, so th these experiments are done in 38, with 38 HK, um, expressing uh, delta MP73 alpha fused to uh, the HA tag in conditions of uh, E2F45 knockdown versus control. And what you can see is uh, that uh, delta MP73 alpha can interact with region 2 of uh, the promoter, it's an E2F consensus, which has an E2F consensus sequence in the promoter of the MAFP gene. And uh, when you knock down uh, E2F45, you lose uh, this interaction. So in other words, uh, this is also showing that uh, delta MP73 alpha redirects, uh, so that delta MP73 alpha is redirected to E2F4, E2F, uh, consensus sites. So we are now uh, trying to understand the function of this complex, and especially with uh, regard to proliferation. So um, what we have observed quite early in the project that when we do the knockdown of e 2 f 45 in the transformed 38 HK cells, we have uh, uh, an induction of premature senescence. And uh, this is associated with the formation of senescent associated heterochromatin foci that we vi visualize here by immunofluorescence using an antibody that recognizes the lysine 9 methylation mark on the histone 3. And uh, uh, so these are known, the SANS foci, known to be um, occurring at the correspondence of uh, uh, E2F regulated genes that are inhibited by E2FRB complexes. So when we do, uh, when we compare scramble versus knockdown um, E2F45 um, cell samples, we have an, about an, a fourfold increase of uh, uh, FOCI formations so of cells positive for the methylation, the lysine methylation mark. However, we don't see uh, the, this, the knockdown does not seem to affect FOCI for formation in the case of keratinocytes that are, um, that are immortalized, transformed by the alpha HPV-16 virus, which as 
you maybe remember, uses different mechanisms, the grades, in fact, RB, and NIDA in the primary keratinocytes. So, uh, and this is not a very beautiful Western blot, but here you can see that this, uh, we have indeed, we find again, we are just confirming uh, previous findings, but that RB levels are much higher in the case of 38HK as compared to 16HK and you know, HPK also. So, and at the same time, we also observe that uh, we, among the list of co-regulated genes, we have uh, CDK and inhibitor genes. That if you remember, they are the ones that uh, inhibit cyclin dependent kinases. So uh, we have find we find that uh, P27, P15, P19 are upregulated in in conditions of lockdown of either E245 or the time 73 alpha and. If we look at the expression of these genes in conditions scramble versus SI, uh, like E245 knockdown in the primary keratinocyte, we have uh, no change for P19. We have a bit less, uh, so le significantly less announcement for P15, whereas P27 seems to, rest, uh, to stay the same. So, and if we retrotransduce, P19 into uh, 38HK transformed uh, 38HK cells, we have an increase of uh, uh, the methylation, Lysin 9 methylation mark of for sans So uh, showing that P19 is enough to, in fact, uh, uh, form this RB, E2FRB complex. So, in, so this is the model which we are still uh, working on to, to validate the complex, the delta M P73 alpha E24 P130 complex repress CDK and inhibitor uh, genes. And this would favor, in fact, the hyperphosphorylation RRP and therefore uh, transcription by E2F, uh, transcription E2F13 transcription factor. So we are also after other functions of this complex. So we have uh, from the comparison of RNA-seq uh, analysis in condition of delta MP73 alpha knockdown versus control or N it was four five knockdown versus control. We have we could identify several genes that are co-regulated. So uh, genes that are upregulated in the knockdown uh, conditions. So these genes are putative targets that are inhibited by the complex, but also many, about 200 genes that are downregulated in, in, the, in the depletion conditions, which would be, in fact, uh, so activated uh, indirectly. I know now indirectly by uh, these two by this complex. And among these genes, we have uh, several genes which are part of the mevalonide pathway that is implicated in cholesterol and fatty acid synthesis. And uh, so what we then found, uh, what I found, so this mevalonate pathway is important be uh, because it uh, it is at the interface with, uh, so it activates uh, um, other signaling pathways, like for example, the EPO pathway, which promotes uh, uh, cellular prolifer proliferation. And what I understood, we understood uh, some, uh, uh, after a bit of uh, wondering what, uh, why we had this uh, uh, repression of these genes, is that it's, oh, they are all linked to the ABCA1 transporter, this is a cholesterol transporter uh, that uh, has been described to, in fact, uh, regulate the maturation of uh, the master transcription factor SREP BP2 from a precursor into a mature form. So this is, in fact, the ABCA1 transcription is regulated by P53. And this inhibits the maturation of SREP BP2, which uh, is, activates the expression of all these genes. 
So, in fact, what we find that uh, the gene is co-regulated by E2, E4, 5 and delta M73 inter hk And indeed, when we compare its expression uh, in primary versus transform cells from the same donor, we have quite an important uh, and remarkable inhibition of its transcription. So what we propose is that we think is that our complex inhibits ABCA1 expression, which in turn promotes the maturation of SREBP2 and the transcription of uh, mevalonate pathway genes. So uh, to, to summarize, we have identified uh, several nuclear binding partners of that time 73 alpha. We have focused on the characterization of the delta MP73 alpha to a 4 P130 complex. This is a complex that acts at the interface of P53 and RB signaling. It's favored by the truncation uh, typical of delta M uh, isoforms. And we show that it, it is able to rewire it to a 4 and delta M to inhibit the expression of specific genes. So these data are now published. And so what we are working on, uh, we can try to understand the contribution of this complex, in particular first proliferation, uh, and focusing on the regulation of uh, RB phosphorylation and the uh, mevalonate pathway. So a big thanks goes to Massimo, who has been uh, a great uh, collaborator, but especially a very good friend. And uh, I think maybe people from uh, Lawrence group uh, have been to his uh, uh, famous uh, uh, meetings in Puglia. And uh, these are the people who have uh, uh, provided the main contributions to the second part of the, of the talk, to the world. Yes. And thank you for your attention.